Hey guys, uh, this is going to be part 5 of my uh, low CA 3.0 build and what I'd like to do is show you guys how <clears throat> how I build the uh, differentials. I already went through and assembled the rear and then uh, decided I'd take it apart and show show some people how I, uh, how I build the rear differential. Um, as far as shimming it goes, uh, anyway uh, you guys are probably familiar with the shims that this uh, this vehicle comes with. Uh, we were talking about the upgrades on this, and the, one of the upgrades that it comes with is the aluminum rear inserts for the diff. And you know there's shims in there that need to be put in in order for the differential, or I should say, ring and pinion to work properly. So basically, the first thing that you're going to do, and this would apply to any any of the low C vehicles that have the shims, uh, the 2.0 and the 3.0. Um, okay, first thing you want to do that's pretty important because you cannot set the pinion depth, uh, you know, like on a real car. So the first thing you want to do is put your coupler on and your ring and pinion in. But the thing is, is you want to squeeze on here when you put the coupler on so there's no play and then you go go ahead with your Loctite tighten your grub screw and just make sure that this doesn't move in and out you know you have literally just about zero play in and out and then you're ready to set your, uh, your differential in now this thing comes with 4.10 millimeter shims and 2.25 millimeter shims so uh, what I do is I shim it as close to the pinion as possible. So you're going to take on the on the ring gear side, the side with the teeth, you're going to put 3.10 millimeter shims on this side, so that's going to be 0 .30. And then this side, you're going to take 2.25 millimeter shims and 1.1 millimeter shim and put it on there so that's going to put the differential closest to the ring uh, ring or the pinion gear I should say so then once your shims and your shims go on over the bearing over the flanged bearing so those go on first then you're going to take your insert and slide it in and slide this in so basically what you have is 0 .60 thickness here 0 .30 thickness here and I'm tongue tied <laughs> okay so we got that set and then um, the orientation of this is kind of hard because it, it looks like it'll fit both ways. The basic thing is these things come with lettering, two point, or wording, whatever, numbering, 2.0. Make sure those are facing out. This is kind of obvious here because you have this notch that goes here. This one here, you want to point it out so it slides into the differential. And I know these things can be a little bit tricky to set up, but trust me, you get it set up right, it's going to be well worth it because the differential uh, will be buttery smooth. So you just kind of set them in the slots, and you might have to finagle and squeeze a little bit on, on there to, to get this in. And it should just slide right in as soon as I can get it. And we'll pop this in. It's lined up. I don't have very good lighting here, so it's tough for me to see, but figures I can do it until it's on camera, then I can't get it in. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to get this side set, and I'm going to slide. There we go, popping out on me again. So, we'll get it put in there, and then you just snap it down, and you can see that it's that it's in. And also, you're going to check and spin it to make sure there's no binding all the way around. And that is like buttery smooth. And then after that, uh, so you get no dirt or water intrusion or whatever, you want to grease this just like it would be sealing it off. Uh, just a small bead of grease is what you want to run around it. I've already done it once, but anytime you take this apart, you do want to reseal it. And then you just run a bead of grease around this. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. <clears throat> that way when it goes together, <clears throat> you won't get any intrusion of dirt or water. Not, you know, not a lot anyway. I don't think it would, if you submerge it, it probably would leak in there. And then you just slide that on. And you can kind of squeeze this together like the screws are in. And turn it around. I mean, this is 
so buttery smooth. So basically, that's just about how you do it. Um, if there is, if it's a little too tight when you set it up like this, if you're gonna put more shims in, or sw you you might wanna put. Not, I wouldn't say more in, but you could switch them around. So if you take one away here and put it here, that's gonna make it tighter. If you take one away here and put it there, it's gonna make it looser. But this way the manual says it should get you pretty close. There is a discrepancy in here. It does say it comes with 3.25 millimeter sh uh, shims. And I think it says it comes with 3.10 millimeter shims. Um, which isn't right. It actually comes with 3.10s and 2.25s. So you get a s the basic setup that I found is 60-30. So that's what you got, or 0 .60, 0 .30. 0 .60 thicker on the side, the back side of the ring gear, and then the side where the teeth are facing, you want 0 .30 millimeters. And that should get it pretty, pretty close. Um, it can be a little tricky if, it, if it's not right, and it don't feel right, if you feel a little bit of binding, or if it's real crunchy, you might want to switch it, but that should be the general setup for all of them. It's, it's not that difficult, so... I mean, if I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> so, if there's any other questions you guys have on uh, on setting this up, you know, you guys can comment. I'll do my best to answer for you guys. Um, other than that, that should be should be it. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. This build is going nice and smooth. Like I said, I already had it uh, had it together, took it apart. I figured I'd do this video because I did get a few questions from people. Um, other than that, uh, I can show you guys, I'm, I'm going to put this back together and I'll possibly do another video tonight uh, with the rear end together. I still got to put the side skirts on. Uh, I have to build a radio tray, but I don't think, um, I don't think I'll do that just yet. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. Uh, I'm going to set the clutch up possibly tonight too, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the stock clutch setup, the carbon and the aluminum shoes. Normally I like to use the long wear shoes, but I've been testing these out lately and I just seem to like, they hit a little bit better. And, uh, you know, the aluminum shoes, they do last longer, but they also seem to slip a little more, so you're kind of wasting a little bit of power, uh, you know, planting it to, to the surface you know when the buggy's under acceleration so uh, I just I just use that and it seems to, to hit a little bit better and if you set the springs up just right um, you're not slipping the clutch so actually the shoes will last quite a while on the uh, on the carbon and the softer aluminum plus it's lighter you get better spool time and stuff like that I don't, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this aluminum flywheel I do like the punch from the aluminum flywheel because it, it takes less power to spool it up but the heavier flywheel sometimes gives you a little bit smoother engagement so we're gonna we're gonna play it by ear I'll probably test this out with the uh, with the uh, new buggy uh, with the stock uh, stock flywheel and then uh, I've got a ton of those uh, steel flywheels I'm sure you guys seen that uh, I went and built the shocks too those are built I didn't really feel the need to do a video on that because if you just follow it like the instructions say, they're going to go really smooth. And these shocks are pretty sweet. They are um, very well machined, uh, very smooth. Uh, the bleeding process, sometimes it takes a couple tries to get it right. When you set the rebound, um, even if you set it, I think I set it at, at one third rebound all the way around just to start with. And you'll notice that if the pack is wrong, one's going to extend faster than the other, and they will extend all the way. But as long as you, and it's the way the new bladders are in the shocks, if you, ex, uh, if, if they are extending all the way, but that doesn't matter. As long as you uh, set the rebound where you want it, like push the shaft halfway in, then tighten your cap up partially, and then bleed it out. As long as you have that rebound set, that's what it's at. So even if it does extend all the way, that's fine. Just make sure that they are extending equally together. They come out at the same time. Other than that, you guys should be all set. And that's that's about it. I'm going to put this together. I don't think there's too much that I'm going to need to elaborate on. Um, I'll just show you guys you know, the end result of it. I don't have any tires currently, so maybe next weekend I'm going to buy some tires. Um, I'm getting my body done. I'm actually going to send it out to get it painted. Um, 
kind of professionally. My friend is going to do it for me, and I'll show you guys that. That'll that'll be in a few weeks. Uh, I have plans of getting a new engine. It's going to be probably after Christmas, uh, just you know, because of course the kids are more important than this stuff. So they got to get their presents first. Uh, my daughter with her low C Mini 8, she's going to be getting a few upgrades for that Mini 8. So I'll show you guys those. Uh, I just got some cool videos coming up. Possibly another, excuse me, another build video. Something uh, totally different to me. So this this will be nice. I'm going to be racing a different class. So we'll have possibly that coming up. And okay, I'm not going to babble too much, you guys. Uh, like I said, any questions, comment below. And hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Tell your friends to subscribe to my channel. And that's that's really awesome. I've been getting a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of subscribers from the Nitro RC Nerds. And man, this guy, he... He just does a fantastic job with his videos. I wish I could be half as good as him with the videos. And he's came such a long way in this hobby. He really knows his shit. Uh, pardon my French, but he, he really does now. So I suggest you guys follow up on him. He's really good with the maintenance. I mean, his, his stuff from day one just looks like he just opened it up out of the box. I mean, he, he is very, very, very particular about cleaning, keeping his vehicles well-maintained. So I suggest you guys check him out if you haven't. The Nitro RC Nerds, uh, those guys, they're great people. So keep an eye out for his videos. They're, they're just awesome. So you guys have a really good night, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks again, guys.